This presentation is part of a collection of office presentations for Realtors. Home Energy Surveys is part of the current issue series. This presentation can be made in your office, usually during a sales meeting. Details for scheduling an office presentation are included at the end. Whether you're a tenant, homeowner, or home buyer, you want the place you're living in to be healthy, long-lasting, comfortable, and energy efficient. There's a lot of buzz in the media ever since the oil embargo of 1973 about improving the energy performance of homes. Since then, there have been several green initiatives. Many of the proposed improvements have found their way into newer homes. Existing houses need to be retrofitted to improve home performance. The improvements to make are known. However, what needs to be done, and in what order, depends on the house. Most people want to do the right thing by our planet while protecting their wallet, but with so much information out there, it's difficult to know where to start. It also doesn't take long to drown in all the information that's out there. A good place to start is when somebody is considering the purchase of a new home. The place is unfamiliar, there's a lot to learn, and hopefully before figuring it out the hard way. During the purchase process, we get home inspections to understand how all the systems in the house work together to give us the home we want. Unfortunately, a standard home inspection won't get us there because it treats all the components of the house as if they were somehow independent parts. These components work together to give us indoor air quality, moisture control, and resource management. These are performance issues, generally ignored in a home inspection because they are explicitly excluded and most home inspectors don't understand them as well as they should anyway. Generally, this is how a house is purchased and managed today relative to performance issues. After getting a home inspection, the home buyer takes possession of the house at closing and then begins noticing quirks after living in it for a short while. The symptoms may be doctor visits or unexpectedly high energy bills. To solve the problems, the homeowners begin looking around for ways to deal with them. Before they know it, there's a lot of seemingly conflicting information coming at them from all directions. They get overwhelmed and decide to just live with it. They simply give up and do nothing. It's not hard to get overwhelmed. Contractors bombard us every day with information about how their windows, heating and cooling systems, and insulation will help them save big on their energy bills. The reason these items are marketed so heavily is because there's a high profit margin attached to them. And it doesn't help when the House Majority Leader and some prominent talk show hosts diss the entire program because there's no future in caulking a house. Horror stories abound too. And you know who creates them? The guys with the silver bullets. Ladies and gentlemen, if home performance were just caulking holes in the house, engineers and scientists would not be spending their careers helping people solve these problems in their homes. The issues and solutions are much bigger than that. Here's the truth about almost every house out there. Nationally, we're wasting about 30 to 40 percent of the energy used in our homes. Some houses are making the occupants sick, more than we really know about, and approximately one third of them have combustion safety issues. Unfortunately, solving the energy issues alone ends up hurting us. There is no silver bullet for improving home performance. It takes a whole house approach. Improvements have to be decided in a certain order or it's possible to ruin health. The good news is that most of the things that we need to do with the house are relatively cheap when compared to windows, furnaces, and air conditioners. Almost all of them are do-it-yourself projects, but the house still needs to be tested after the work is done. In the home performance industry, we figured these things out the hard way. First, educating anyone on the topic is a process. If you start with a full-blown assessment, most people are so overwhelmed they choose to do nothing wasting our time and their money. We always knew contractors couldn't be trusted. Therefore, the public is wary of the contractors who do whole house assessments. If a consultant works with the contractors and the homeowners until the work gets done, nine out of 10 people at least do something. A home buyer wants to know how healthy, durable, and comfortable and energy efficient their new home is going to be. I know I expected a home inspector to help me understand these things when I bought my house. I was blown away when I figured out they weren't going to help me when I get there. I didn't know I had major until I had major issues. Until I became a home inspector and learned building science, I didn't even know they didn't know. Only after completing the basic things first does it make sense to do a whole host of other things to improve indoor air quality, moisture control, and resource management. Believe it or not, the basic things will take you most of the way. The basic things need to be done first because they will reduce the size and amount of equipment needed. Less energy, less cost. Why pay to handle the demands of wasted energy? 
How does all this relate to a home inspection? First, to a home, trained home inspector, the visual clues are obvious, especially for the heating and cooling part of the energy equation. What is unknown, without diagnostic testing, is the priority order they need to be dealt with. Therefore, performance can only be predicted. It cannot be claimed with any certainty. Like anything else, the issues need to be referred to qualified professionals. Understand that the house that is being looked at today is similar to all others like it, built to the same standards. Going to find a better, similar house is probably futile. Therefore, the findings should not be raised as repair requests from the sellers. What is available to a homeowner is the home energy model that takes into consideration the homeowner's lifestyle and addition, in addition to the house. For the online home energy survey, the homeowner puts in the requested information and the program recommends improvements. To complete this model, I collect eight pages of data. It's easy for me to do because I'm already looking at the house and I'm already familiar with the program. It would take a homeowner much longer than that. Only diehards would finish it. I provide nearly a complete model for the homeowner to finish. I'm training home inspectors to do this. Complete the standard home inspection. Include home performance issues, but not as an issue to be discussed with the sellers. Work with the buyer's realtor to figure out when best to present this information, especially if a refrigerator purchase is involved. Unless the homeowner is particularly savvy about home performance issues, wait a couple of months after they move in before sharing the home energy saver model information with them. How to handle this type of home inspection is the subject of another office presentation, Balanced Home Inspection. It too is available online. Remember, a complete assessment of the house should not occur at the time of the home inspection, usually. The home buyer is still trying to decide whether to buy the house, not necessarily how to fix it. In addition, they can't know the quirks of the house until after they live in it for a while. To complete the assessment and set priorities, diagnostic testing is required. Building air leakage, duct leakage, and combustion safety. Other tests may be needed too. When the assessment is complete, only then is it appropriate to begin to prescribe ways to address the issues. For us to finish it, we'll charge a dry fee and a charge per test we take. We've already done most of the visual assessment. Once the assessment is complete, the scope of work is created. Creating the work plan is not straightforward. In addition to the work that needs to be done, there are different ways of doing it. Then there are personal preferences and the available budget. Most people can't make the improvements all at once. It's normally a work in progress. Normally, the scope of work is iterated several times. The consultant needs to be paid for assisting with the scope of work. The way work is best done is for the contractor to pay project management fee from the funds received from the homeowner. I let my clients know up front that this is how the payment scheme works. Ideally, the client should pay the consultant directly to ensure complete independence, but rarely do things get done this way. It's a win-win situation for all of us involved in the real estate transaction. The homeowners are happy to understand how their house works. If they go on to do the work, then they enjoy better health and cheaper energy bills. When home buyers are happy, realtors are happy. They are likely to refer their friends and families to them rather than sue everyone they can find because they are unhappy. A better trained home inspector enjoys lower E&O insurance premiums, and if the inspector also happens to be a home performance consultant, then work may follow too. The bottom line is things get done. This about wraps up this presentation on improving home energy use. If you have any questions or comments, please email them to me. To schedule this or any other office presentation Home Insight offers, call Sam Young. To find out what other office presentations are available, or to find out what other useful resources there are for realtors, visit our website, homeinsight.biz. Until then, this is Sherlock Holmes, Sam Young, solving the case of the mysterious home conditions, where we can help homeowners and homebuyers understand their house.